conceptual perspective. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. This has been one crazy day. Um, anyway, I'm going to get right to the point. Um, you, you just watched the preempt to uh, this video. And so, you know, we're raising money for the Odyssey Project as a whole, but also Black Man Lead. Let me tell you something. People critique, defame, place, ba place blame, uh, and complain all while contributing nothing uh, to making something better. At the end of the day, uh, I give myself to the things I'm passionate about, sometimes to my own detriment. Uh, there's a reason right now I'm on uh, a mental health break from working with my clients because I'm constantly going, I'm constantly giving. Not complaining, but I'm putting it out there, I'm letting it be known that what I do is me and all of my humanity. I'm not perfect, I'm far away from that. I never present myself as being, but what I am is committed. You know, I'm not perfect, so I make mistakes along the way, but I'm engaged. Uh, while most people are observing from the sideline as they critique the work and they complain as they observe those who are really, truly invested and empowered. I don't give a whole lot of attention to it, but I want to point out that these are the people who are complaining. When you're complaining and critiquing, when are you working? When are you commit, uh, committed? Look, I'm, I'm not going to be long, so let me don't get, let me step down off this soapbox. Look, during interviews, I'm often asked, what do I want my legacy to be when I'm done? Usually my response is somewhere along the lines, I want my legacy to reveal that I didn't use my humanity, my imperfections, my failures, my past as an excuse not to be engaged, not to be involved, uh, but rather that I stood for something that I believed in, in my humanity and imperfection, and I strove to do something and I gave and I made a difference. I left a better world for my children and their children. I wanted to say that I came, I saw, and I conquered despite my humanity. You know, the truth is, there are some things that I wish I had. I wish I had some do-overs, but this is real life. There are no do-overs, but I have to be satisfied with do-betters. So that's what I live my life doing, doing better than I did yesterday, doing better than I did last year, but teaching young black men how to do the same. We love to complain about horrible, how horrible black uh, men are, how horrible black males and black boys are. We love to complain about how incorrigible they are. Well, I've proven that that's not the case when we invest in them. You know what our boys are? They are going to be a reflection of what we invest in them. What we invest in them in the way of identity, a sense of responsibility, a sense of honor, a sense of anticipation and expectation of what they're supposed to be. When studying African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, 
uh, because I wanted to find a way to mitigate it. And the, work, the, the way you, 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 you mitigate something, the way that you impact something is you have to find causality. You have to find the source, the origin. Everybody's focused on the symptoms. I want to know the origin because if I can get to the origin, I can make a difference. And what I found is there are five primary elements and components that influence African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence. Number one is... Uh, a feeling of being disrespected. If you go to prison, almost every violent act is some kind of way behind somebody feeling disrespected one way or another. Whether they were justified or unjustified is not the ar argument. Uh, number one, the most Im influential feeling disrespect. Number two, a lack of racial socialization. No sense of self, no sense of identity, cultural responsibility, or social responsibility. Uh, we don't have a rite of passage. All other groups have a rite of passage that prepare their young boys to become men. They know what's expected of them. They know what they uh, what, what they have to do, what they're striving for. They know that they're going to be held to a certain standard. They have something to literally grow up into and be uh, excited about becoming. And there's no standard of manhood. There's no true identity. And then the next is, uh, number three is being a victim of violence. Number four is being a witness to violence. Number five is urban hassle. For those who don't know what urban hassle is, it's what most inner city kids deal with on a regular basis without ever realizing that it's agitating them and increasing their likelihood to at some point exhibit violence. Urban hassle is everything from navigating uh, gang violence and drug activity to and from school, uh, gunshots and sirens all times of the night, uh, arguing and fussing and fighting inside of the home, uh, in, in the Northeast, in the Midwest, L trains all time of the night, rattling the building and so much more is a part of that. And it increases the agitation levels and it makes it more likely. But what I found is the area that we have the ability to impact the most is racial socialization. We we lack it because we lack men in the home. We lack it because we're missing 1.5 men. So how we make up for it? We have to create a rite of passage program. I did that with Black Man Lee. The rite of passage program takes young black boys from age four on up to 13 and teaches them the principles of manhood, teaches them their responsibility to themselves, to their families, how they're supposed to treat women, how they're supposed to treat other black males the responsibility to prepare themselves and educate themselves, not simply through academics, but through the preparation and develop, developing a skill set that will allow them to make a living wage. What I can tell you is that when a black male is properly socialized, their proclivity for violence decreases, their proclivity for dropping out of school decreases, their chances of being incarcerated decreases, um, their chances of committing domestic or intimate partner violence decreases. They increase their chance of finishing school. They increase their chance of making a living wage. This is the reality of it. I aim to take this program on a, and create a national network where every city has a program being ran that they can that young black males, the parents of young black males can tap into and plug these young boys into because a lot of times there are no male figures. I remember being pulled into a place back in 2011, 2012 in Dallas where there was an entire community where there was a 95% single parent, uh, single female head of household ratio. You can imagine what was going on in that community when they pulled me into it. Uh, as far as the males were, were concerned. But what I can tell you is, despite the havoc, despite the chaos, they want to be loved. They want a place. They want to be respected. They want to they wanna belong. It's our responsibility to create something from them more than we judge them. It's easy to judge somebody from a distance. It takes real heart to go in and say, hey, look, I'm going to go through this with you. I'm going to show you something nobody else has ever shown you. I'm, instead of judging you, I'm going to teach you. When I'm asking you to support the work, I'm talking about years and years of blood, sweat, and tears, trying to find the answers that everybody complains up to the things that everybody complains. But I don't want to complain. I want to be a life changer. I want to be a catalyst for growth, change, and expansion. I want to take this thing national. You hear me say this all the time. I need your support. I'm saying it again. Um, I'm going to keep doing what I do because it's who I am, because that's my legacy. I'm working my legacy. And I tell people all the time, my first half of my life was about me. It's about me having what I want, drive what I want, doing what I want, improving the people that I could do it. And then I grew up 
And the second half of my life became about my legacy. It, 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 it became about what I would leave behind, what would speak of me after I'm gone. Black Man Lead is a part of my legacy. The Odyssey Project is a part of my legacy. And I am asking you to help me reach these young black boys. It's so much more than that, but this is a part of the program that is so massively underfunded and so absolutely necessary. So once again, I'm asking you, look in the description box, look in the, uh, the post box, wherever this video is being shown, look in there and donate. On that note, I'm out of here. I tell you what, I'm going to stay long. I'm out of here. <laughs>